Bessie, it's the season. It's the season. So I wish you a very Merry Christmas. For me and my friends. I hope you have a really, really happy holiday. We'll keep interrupting. I wish you all a wonderful holiday. It's the season. But you don't seem merry, jolly, or happy. What's going on? Nobody got you anything? Damn, well that's pretty fucking sad. I'm not gonna lie. But hey, I'm giving you something this year. <gasps> oh my god, what, what is it? This atrocious video that will live in your minds for the rest of your life. Some of the scenes from today's Christmas movie are definitely gonna make it into your nightmares tonight. Damn bitch. <laughs> I just searched on Google real quick. The worst Christmas movie ever. And it, it was very easy to come across Rhapsody Street Kids Believe in Santa. Shockingly, this was the first part of a planned trilogy. Thank God they didn't make the trilogy. <laughs> Thank God they stopped at the first movie. They stopped at Believe in Santa. Believe? Don't believe, is what they said. Don't. And thank God for that. We're gonna go through this like we always do. There is a version of me in the past that hasn't seen the movie yet. Haven't seen the movie yet. Let's see how long my sanity lasts. And then there's me. The, the angrier version. <laughs> that, that has wasted his time. Right off the bat, it looks like shit. Don't let the appearance fool you. This is not a small production. It is not some kid's high school garage project. No, it's a serious production produced by none other than the North Pole Productions. <laughs> North Pole Productions. Yes, a Christmas movie produced by the North Pole Productions. <laughs> how, how convenient. Is that all they make? Over at North Pole Productions Christmas movies? I guess so, I don't know. Never heard of them before. I'm not even gonna talk about the animation. Cause like, I, I don't think I can do a better job. But please, the design choices from the start are questionable. Who the f*** goes for a Comic Sans font? Comic Sans! The choice of font was Comic Sans. What kind of tacky are you? <laughs> Maybe they wanted it to be lighthearted. But then it got very confusing because the actual title of the movie came up in a very different font. This just is giving dark magic cult. Believe in Santa. In almost satanic font. But what was a lot more confusing was that the name of the movie was not actually Rhapsody Street Kids. <laughs> I thought it was Rhapsody Street Kids. What the f*** was the name of this movie anyway? It's not. It's just Believe in Santa. You can't even like Google Believe in Santa. Nothing comes up. The only thing that comes up is Rhapsody Street Kids. Basically, I sat there and I waited for that intro. <laughs> I, th I thought the intro was the movie at one point because that shit never ended. It just kept going. That snowflake would just never hit the fucking ground. Every time I th it would get close, it would go right back up again. It was endless. And then it ended. Unfortunately, because it really wasn't that bad until I actually saw how the characters were animated. <laughs> oh boy. Shut the fuck. Who gave you that job? <laughs> Starts off with a school bus that drives up, all right, and it's fucking smoking for some reason. The bus is on, <laughs> the bus is burning, and it spills out a bunch of Legos. But if there's anything commendable and applaudable about this movie, it is the fact that it is certainly full of surprises. Because as soon as the Legos were spat out the bus, one of the Legos started spinning bars. It was the week before Christmas that I'm talking. I spent the day shopping with my grandma walking. Rhapsody, Street Kit, the rapping. And that's when it hit me. This was a Christmas rap musical. Look, it's not a trashy production. Okay, so obviously, like, it's an animated movie, but they want to make it as realistic as they could. So, you really just can't hear shit the characters are saying because of the hustle and bustle of the city. Scooter with a motor, that was flat. I hope they're ruining Santa's sleigh just for that. I've been told this time of year is... Y'all, I can't hear what he's trying to say. <laughs> Everything is so f***ing loud. It's like, it's like when somebody talks to you in a club. 
That's what this movie felt like. It was that kind of frustrating. Bottom line, he was just rapping about Christmas. You know, kind of like the intro, there's a pattern in this movie. Everything just never ends. Give to please others, Santa, this is how I'm But if you kindly find the time, I'm not selfish, I'm just driven. I've been a good boy through the year, you better know it. Lady Santa Claus is start decking. So he starts rapping, and then just when you think it's over, it starts up again. <laughs> Though it's cold outside. They just wanted to tell you that he was poor, all right, and that he can't really afford any of the toys that he and the spirit that possessed him wanted to buy. I don't know what the f*** happened here. The animator's hand slipped or something. All he had was three coins. One, two, three is all I see. So our main character, Ricky, is broke. And so he sadly and solemnly drags his feet back home. <laughs> Oh my god, okay. Girl, the walk home was like 15 minutes. And we walked all 15 minutes back with him. The pattern that I'm talking about, you know? When something starts, you think it's ending, it doesn't. You know, it just keeps stretching. <laughs> So the produ the writers, aka Colin, and his team of just Colin, decided that Ricky does not have enough pity points. If him not having money just doesn't cut it for you, they decided to throw in there the fact that his mom died and the only thing she's left behind is a teddy bear. Mama, I miss you big. That his warm, altruistic heart has decided to give to his crush on Christmas Day. You gave me this bear cause of love. So I'll give this bear cause of love. Except Nicole is an absolute menace who actually despises him because he's poor. I'm telling you this now because I want you to think about where the plot should be going. Anyway, this Nicole girl, she kind of looks like his teacher, but they're classmates over at Rhapsody Elementary School. You heard that right. I have to dress extra cute. Ah, uh, yes. Elementary school. Oh, God, come on! Ricky's gonna decorate the tree! Uh, who, what elementary school is this? <laughs> Even on Netflix standards, the age is here a little bit off. And in elementary school, there is this one hunk, Todd, who looks like he should be the Godfather's right hand, and his voice sounds like he's hitting puberty backwards. Let's just see what Ricky Rhymemaster can do. He's unhitting puberty, is what he's doing. <laughs> mm, that does not look like it should be your voice. <laughs> hey, Ricky, what you on do? New, New York. Right? That's the vibe this man gives off. It's just not registering in my head. And Bestie, believe it or not, Nancy Cartwright was behind Todd's voice. She's the voice of Bart Simpson. The Simpsons. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is a big production. It's for Nicole the honey. I know she's into money. What? <laughs> oh my god. It's for Nicole the honey. I know she's into money. Son, she's an elementary school child. Who wrote this? From here. We get animation atrocity after animation atrocity that brings absolutely nothing to the plot. Nothing. So what we know is that Ricky is poor, and he has a teddy bear that his deceased mom had given him that he wants to re-gift to his crush, Nicole. But then, Ricky Rogers decorates the tree for no reason. <laughs> go, Ricky, go! <laughs> we just spent a few minutes decorating a tree, and then he trips for no reason. Whoa! And he destroys the tree that he had decorated. Still a nice tree. And the mean boys make fun of him. Don't you know how to sit? Or can you only fall down? <laughs> For a reason, I guess. But then they also think he's really cool, too. <laughs> that was so cool. So... What the f*** was going on? <laughs> we could have literally just removed all of that and not put it in the movie. What Ricky was really waiting for in school was the gift-giving time. 
but that would have to wait because it's time for recess because Mrs. Parmington said so. So you know how in animated movies they sometimes throw in some humor for the parents to laugh at too? Yeah, that was what Mrs. Parmington's job was, I guess. Ugh, I think I'll ask Santa for a vacation to a beautiful white island. She was terrible. I said after recess because I need a recess. She was so bad. Miss Mam would not stop complaining. I need your attention. And I need the calm fairy to dust this room. Everything she said was a dig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She just passive aggressively comes at everyone, even at the principal, for a raise. I know that my family is just going to spoil me rotten to the core. But I she makes me want to quit her job. You know, it was never funny. It was draining. It was exhausting. Damn, man. Anyways, let's, let's get, get ready, ready for, for recess. recess. And boy, I was not ready for that recess. <laughs> Y'all, what the fuck? I had no idea. What the hell is that? What the hell? <laughs> Y'all, man's gone was going on most of the time. I'm gonna take your sandwich! You won't get away from me! Everything was just so... I'll get him for you, Todd! He's no match for me! Oh my god, y'all are way too ambitious. You don't need to make a chase scene. Recess was a fever dream. You're asking for it! You're asking for it? You're dying for it? You good, Smithy! Oh my god, they didn't even bother fix that lip sync. They didn't even bother. Everything was so <laughs> wild. But that was the first time we got a feel of what Nicole was really like. Watch me, everyone. I'll watch you, Nicole. Not you. She's not very nice. She's a mean girl. And after all the unnecessary chaos we've created, all the tension we've built, we were finally getting back. To the plot. It's almost gift-giving time. It's the moment Ricky's been waiting for. So we're back in class, or more like the staff room with the way these kids be looking, I swear to God. The point is we're no longer sidetracking, okay? We're back to the moment Ricky had been daydreaming about, giving his trash old teddy bear to bad girl Nicole. Except she got a reindeer from Lene. Who the f*** is Lene? What did you get from the grab bag, Nicole? Oh, hey, that is so cool. I wish I had one. Here. Cheap is not cool, Lene. Now my gift's the best. It came from the mall. I brought that for the grab bag, Nicole. I picked her out myself. All right, so Nicole's one of these bitches, huh? And why didn't Nicole get Ricky's gift? We don't know. Why was he even excited to give the gift if this was never gonna happen? I don't know. Make it make sense. I'll explain. All right, Lene is actually Nicole's bestie, and she's played by Jodie Benson, who, by the way, is the voice behind Ariel in The Little Mermaid. Isn't that crazy? Anyway, class dismissed, and the herd stampedes out. Oh my god, it's like a herd of bison. Ricky is waiting for her outside after class to give her the teddy bear. Well, what do you want, Ricky? This is where Nicole shuts him down pretty bad. What could we possibly have to talk about? You know, you're not cool because you don't shop at the mall where all the cool people go. You know, the mall. From the mall. The coolest hangout spot in the country. So that makes me perfect since all of my presents come from the mall. She's perfect because all her perfect gifts come from the mall. But then Ricky's best friend does what besties do. He stood up for his best friend. He said, You're perfectly weird, Nicole. You're perfectly weird. Stay down, dude. Calm down. Those are fighting words. Those are fighting words. Now, this is the general energy Nicole was giving. We didn't give the teddy bear yet, okay? I know that's mine. It better be good. But these are the vibes we're getting from Nicole. Pompous, arrogant, materialistic. Do you think we should give the teddy bear that we have as a gesture of love and appreciation? 
Yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're gonna give the bear. This is from the heart. Merry Christmas, Nicole. She goes off. Have you lost your mind? Are you purposely trying to embarrass me? His face, his face is something. It's, it's as emotional as bad animation can get. He was hurt. I can't even exchange this nasty old thing. You sure are stupid. <laughs> Give it back. Mad, angry, he stormed off in exactly the same direction she was headed, which I would assume made things a little bit awkward for the both of them. She trashes that bear, you know? She just throws it in the trash. Hey, brat! Who do you think you are? Now, they never specified when this was, but sometime in the future, the girls were hanging out and they were passing by Ricky's house, where you could see him through the window of his house, sat there, writing letters with a quiff, sat over a candle. So, his family's financially struggling, okay? Their only source of heat and light was a candle. And Nicole says something very mean. Ricky, who gave you that candle? Oh, that is a really mean thing to say. Who got you that candle? So mean. Meanie. But this is the part of the movie you meet my favorite character, his grandmother. Y'all, this old lady casts spells underneath her breath all the damn time. Oh. <laughs> See, oh. She just spits out just enough words for you to understand what the subject is about. Sending letters. Kids nowadays. And the rest of it is incantations. She's not really helpful because when he asks for advice, she doesn't really have a lot to say. How? When I feel so bad. So, what Ricky was actually writing was his letter to Santa, all right? And you know what? That letter, it was selfless. It was altruistic. It was mature. Dear Santa, please send me a video box. And please send toys to all the kids in my class. Even Nicole. I gave her my special bear that Mama gave me before the angels took her. It was exactly the kind of thing just your typical elementary school kid would say. Mama before the angels took her. But he's walking out to ship the mail, and then one letter falls out, his letter, and it flies away. Girl, it flies away. Oh my god. That shit could have sprouted wings and flew away the way that was. Oh, oh, oh. It was levitating. Wow, I've never seen letters do that before. That shit was in the air 30 minutes. Is it hurricane season? <laughs> but the letter conveniently lands right in front of Nicole's home. Now, I wish I could explain this next part, but I don't know how we got here. <laughs> Santa Claus! What the f- The best kid in the world is me! Don't you see? Brush my teeth twice behind my ears are so clean. Look at me brush my teeth twice behind my ears are so clean. <laughs> I don't know, man. But from her room, she sees the letter, she heads out to read it, and she finds out the truth. She's Jesus. been a bitch. A special bear that mommy. Oh no. He's such a sweetheart. And she's so mean. What have I done? He said, even Nicole. Even Nicole. Everything in this movie is endless. Slow. Slow. The only thing that's fast is Nicole's character development. Perhaps too fast. That shit was like a second. Uh, it was literally a flip of a switch. Suddenly she's selfless. So then, with the help of her friends, Nicole is searching through the trash for Ricky's teddy bear. When suddenly, she gets caught by the cool boys and the Godfather's right hand who's aging backwards. <laughs> These moments were hard to sit through. 
they were. You were thrown out of the mall, so you're shopping at the dumpster. Oh my god, please make it stop. I was about to dip every time I heard a joke. Don't forget to take a bath before Christmas. You girls stink enough as it is. <laughs> Suddenly, these bullies were out to get them for no reason. I swear, they thought they were cool in the beginning. I don't know what is going on. They couldn't find it in the trash, so they went over to the basement. I can so blackmail you guys! You will be black and blue if anyone hears about this. And when they couldn't find it there, they had to go to a junkyard. How about the junkyard? Oh no. Not that. Uh, and the bullies, for some reason, were in all three of those places. <laughs> They're good at digging through trash. But the junkyard, that's where they find cars. Cars, cars, cars as far as the eye can see. In fact, there is not a single bit of trash that is not a car in that junkyard. Suddenly, they're wildly chased by vicious hounds. <laughs> But wait, what's that? <laughs> Is that a teddy bear sitting on a car very conveniently waiting to be taken? Oh, that was easy. They head back home and on the way there's this one scene where they're climbing this tree. Now is not the time to be a girl. <laughs> that's what sent me. I can That show was so funny to me. I <laughs> so she has the teddy bear. She goes over to Ricky's. She reconciles. So sorry. But then Ricky tells her, babes, the teddy bear's for you. This was a gift for you. But doesn't it mean a lot to you? Yes. And so does friendship. Uh, okay. <laughs> yes. And so does it. This is where the movie could have ended. But no! Instead, we are thrown into everyone's house and we're forced to live out Christmas with them. The first family was all right, Lene's family. Grandma creeped me out a bit, but like everything else was fine. But Nicole's, please. Oh, our princess has my good looks and your spending habits. <laughs> what is this shit? The whole family is Wow. <laughs> Nothing's too good for my princess. And I've got the credit card bills to prove. Everyone's a narcissist in this family. I've got the most beautiful wife and daughter. And of course, they have the most handsome husband and father. And it was it was fine. I, I literally I don't mind it. It's okay. What I do mind was that wink. That wink is horror. So anyway, Nicole was so amazing, all of a sudden, I'm telling you, her character development was insane. Apparently, she ordered a video player because she saw it on Ricky's Christmas list, and then she took it over to gift it to him. And then they all lived happily ever after. Believe in Santa. Believe in Santa. What a movie. Wait, it's not over. They decided an appropriate way to wrap up the movie <laughs> was with um, demonstrating, once again, Nicole's insane character development with this scene. She's sleeping with Lene's toy and Ricky's toy by her sides. What is that? Is that a tear rolling down your cheek? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. That was the worst ever Christmas movie. And it is well deserving of that title. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, and it, what's truly really insane is that this is really not a small production. There are big names associated with this project, and it was intended to be some kind of like a sequel, right? Rap City Street, and then it's like a Christmas movie, and then like a back to school thing. They just wanted to make more. They were listed to make more. They were actually prepared. But then somebody, thank God, miraculously said, no. <laughs> wow, what an adventure. What do you guys think? What are your thoughts? And you know what? I need some Christmas gift ideas. I'm running out. I'm not the I'm not the greatest gifter. That is not my love language. I did the quiz, by the way. It was quality time. What's your love language? You can actually do a quiz. But that's irrelevant. We're talking about Christmas. Can you stop making things about you? <laughs> no, I need gift ideas. I want something funny. 
Like a bag of onions or something. I don't know. Give me ideas, guys. <laughs> and maybe some of you could use some of the ideas you end up finding in the comments as well. If you like the movie series and would like to see me take a look at another extremely terrible, questionable movie, drop a thumbs up, guys. Let's get this video to 50,000 likes. And I might even take a look at another Christmas movie just before Christmas. How's that? So yeah, we could do that, guys. Let me know that in the comments below if that's something you would like. We could totally make this a series. It's kind of already a series at this point. But if you want to keep it going, you got to show it some love. But that was pretty much it, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'm going to go now. Bye.